Okay, the greenhouses, or I should say greenhouse 2.0 is done. Uh, what you're looking at now is the interior of one greenhouse. And so Andrea, although Andrea's tumor is right here. And so the reason I'm at the edge is because it's actually closed right now. But I wanted to show you what the interior looked like with all the turmeric. So let me zip this thing back up and go out. Okay, here's the same greenhouse. Uh, with it all zipped up and everything. Uh, it's been cold here. Now, we're in South Carolina, so cold means it did not even get the 60 yesterday. And it got the 38 this morning. So for us, that's cold. And so... Here is the greenhouse. Now during Hurricane Helene, we had wind gusts here of about 55 miles an hour. Uh, obviously this is nothing compared to what it was in North Carolina or Tennessee or upper parts of South Carolina, but it was enough wind to blow this entire greenhouse over. And this one was going to blow over but luckily I was able to come outside in time and actually take the greenhouse plastic off. So this one did not get blown over. Uh, the other greenhouse was actually flipped over and was in the corner of the fence area right there. But as you can see, all the greenhouses got salvaged. And so that was good. Now these greenhouses, these are Vivor greenhouses. So the website is vivor, V-E-V-O-R dot com. Uh, short version is Vivor is like uh, Amazon, but it's specifically for garden related activities. Uh, that's where we got our landscape fabric from. And so actually a neighbor of ours said that he was looking at landscape fabric costs and Vivor was the cheapest so that he was the one that actually got us to the actual Vivor website. Uh, they have several different sizes of greenhouses. This is the largest they have, which is the 10 by 20. And it's also, let me go inside of this one. It's also tall enough that I am six foot three and I have about, I'd say about two to three inches of clearance on top of me. So I can walk back and forth through this without having to bend over and, um, all the tall people understand what of a pain that is. Now we live in coastal South Carolina. Uh, we live in Horry County. That's where Myrtle Beach is. So when we first put these up, it was still hot. Like average highs were like in the mid to upper 80s, maybe even low 90s for a couple of days. And even with the greenhouses fully open like this one, it was still getting over 100 degrees in here. It was averaging about 105. Hold on a second. Sorry about that, Sherlock. We're trying to clean these. Hold on. That dog is a pain sometimes. So we have our um, bread crates here. And so we're trying to clean those. Ugh. If anybody wants a Springer Spaniel, just let me know. And I'll ship Sherlock to you. No, I'm kidding, by the way. But, um, so, yeah. So, anyway, so, it was over 100 degrees in here, even with this thing fully open. And even if there was a breeze. And so, what we did is we had some lance, or we had some shade cloth that we had that was extra. Sorry about that. I'm going to murder me a dog. Come on, out, out. Okay. All right. Maybe he'll actually be out long enough for me to do this. And so we stuck the shade cloth on. It was a 10 by 16. So it was obviously a lot smaller. And <laughs> all right. You know how kids will like push your buttons all the time. Well, guess what? My kid is furry and he's about 65 pounds. Okay, try number 15. So the shade cloth here, it helped a lot, but it obviously was not big enough. So we ordered 
I want to say these were either 12 by 20 or they were 14 by 20. I forget the way it was. But uh, it's these chaise cloths here. And as you can see, that's what they look from the underside. This is what they look from the outside. And I think these are like 80% shade cloths, if I'm not mistaken. And they are, uh, they're supposed to be like 20 feet long. Obviously they're not. I was not really wanting to super stretch these, but uh, so that's why they're a little shorter on each end and I'm perfectly fine with that. And since the south side is this side over here, I wanted it to be down lower. Now these windows here that are on the sides, uh, for us in our situation, they don't really do a whole lot. But in case we do needed to open them, we have the ability to have the north side windows open. Now these windows, when they're open here, they have actual uh, mosquito netting on them. So it's not like it's open, open, you know, it's just like a screen porch type mesh. And so that's what the shade cloth is. So what we did now, the Vivor website, they said on there that, you know, these things are not designed for wind at all. So it's not like they were misleading or anything. It says on their website, it says all over their instructions, these things are not designed for wind. And so the idea was, it's like, okay, these are not designed for wind. Let's see if we can retrofit them to maybe not withstand a full hurricane. But if we have a wind gust of like 30 or 40 miles an hour, they're not going to blow over. So what we did was we got 16 anchors. And so the anchor is right there, the top of the anchor. Uh, let me show you real quick what basically what the anchor looks like. Okay, here is a similar anchor that we got. Uh, this is a 15 inch long anchor and it has the little uh, wheel thing at the bottom. And basically what you do is you put it into the ground and you basically screw it into the ground. And just like a uh, self-regulating screw, wood screw, the more you screw it, the more it will go into the ground. Now these things will not work that well in a hard soil like clay but in the sandy soil here these things work like a champ and so we got 16 of those so let me put this back okay so we have 16 of these and as you can see there's the top there and you know we have one here one here and then one on the other end and so the idea was to take these anchors put them into the ground and then take the shade cloth and use the shade cloth as like a big umbrella type thing so if the wind picks up and tries to pick these greenhouses up then the shade cloth will help keep the greenhouses down because when the greenhouses were getting damaged by Helene the one on the right over here the one that's open did not have a shade cloth on it but the one on the left did now granted that shade cloth was only on I only had it on the four corners and the sandbags right there were actually holding it down but it was enough to keep that greenhouse down for at least long enough for us to get out here and uh, take it out ourselves, so it wouldn't get permanently damaged. So the idea is the uplift from the greenhouse will start picking the greenhouse up in high wind and then the shade cloth instead of being point loads will have a spread load all the way across the greenhouse to help keep it in place. And then we wanted to further on top of that, just in case the shade cloth gets compromised. Then we came back today because we just got the rope and we went caddy corner on the greenhouses uh, where the anchors are with rope. So we got a rope that's here 
and you can see the diagonal coming across coming down onto that side and then it comes back over here and then it and then it terminates on the other side and so what that is going to do is that that's further protection so the greenhouse if the greenhouse is getting high wind then this should be able to protect them uh, through the storm now again if we get like a powerful hurricane to come through i don't expect these to survive but if we have like a 40 or 50 mile an hour wind gust i do want these to survive so with all of that that should be able to protect them unfortunately we're not going to know until next time we get that type of wind event uh, which unfortunately is too often around here but that's the idea with these greenhouses and the strapping. Now the strapping we got from Farmer's Friend, which is a company that sells greenhouse kits. Now when I mean greenhouses, I don't mean greenhouse like this. I mean like the commercial greenhouses. And there's a type of commercial greenhouse called a Caterpillar Tunnel. And you could look that up and see what that is. And this type of strapping here, which is, I think, it's either 3 eighths or 3 sixteenths inch. Uh, 3 eighths? All right, Andre said 3 eighths inch, high tensile strength uh, nylon rope. And so that's what everything is attached down with. And then, um, so Andre wanted to use the actual greenhouse rope because she knew it was high tensile instead of going to like Tractor Supply or Lowe's or Home Depot and getting their rope, which is not high tensile strength. Uh, then the other thing I wanted to show was twofold. One is Andrea wanted to have carabiners where the uh, connections are to the shade cloth. And the reason is if we ever need to take the shade cloth off, all we have to do is just open up the carabiner and just take the loop out so we don't have to undo this entire thing it's m not my intention to take this shade cloth off but in case we do we have an easier way to do it and then the other thing i wanted to show is our the knotting here and this is the knot that we used the knot is called a double dragon knot there's other knots that you could use like a trucker's hitch was recommended but a trucker's hitch is a compound knot and it's extremely complicated where this double dragon knot is fairly simple to do so as soon as you do it a few times it's very easy to do and i like easy so that's what we did so instead of the the reason why people like using the trucker's hitch is that you can adjust it a lot better so if it needs to get more or less tensile strength on the rope itself then you can adjust it easier with the trucker's hitch but it's also a lot more complicated and so i just wanted to show what type of knot that we used and uh if you want to know what the double dragon knot is you just type in double dragon knot uh online and then they'll have a, a ton of people showing you how to do the knot so hold on i'm getting like level four dog problems all right andre wanted me to show we're still getting eggplants and we're still getting peppers and so uh what we do with these eggplants is we cut off any of the green leaves and then we just throw them in a pot and we cook them enough for them to get soft and then we give them out for the sisters i don't know if you can hear it but we got a decent wind gust that just came through probably at least 20 miles an hour as i was talking and so the uh, greenhouses are holding up like champs so i think that's about it for the greenhouses uh the goal with these greenhouses is we would like to last the, these to last about two years so then we can get a permanent commercial size greenhouse right now i'm thinking a 20 by four, uh, 20 by 60 diy one that's going to go in this area 
we have the end of the fence here and the chicken coop over there but we'll we have a little bit of time to figure that out uh, I want to get the DIY kit because the DIY kits are significantly cheaper than the, uh, the all-in-one kits you know they come with everything done uh, I don't mind bending the hoops uh, if I can save thousands of dollars type deal but that's just me uh, then the other thing I wanted to talk about is our bread crates uh, Andrea went on Amazon market no not Amazon marketplace Facebook marketplace a uh, couple weeks ago and was looking for bread crates or egg crates and the reason for that is we have several hundred pounds of sweet potatoes that we need to uh, dig up and we need to cure uh, hence one of the reasons why we got the greenhouses and um, Andrea found these uh, bread crates in Fayetteville North Carolina which was I think like two hours from us and so uh, what that guy does is he goes in if, if you have a um, mini storage unit and you're delinquent on your bills there's like an eviction process for that and then once the eviction process is done then uh, the landlord can take over the unit so then what he does is that he just opens the doors up and then people come and bid on the unit so you could bid like a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or whatever it would be for that particular unit and then if you win it you give them the money and then you get every single thing that's in that unit and so he did this and ended up with a bunch of bread crates so he had 32 of them so we bought every single one of them and so this is going to be our sweet potato curing area right here we have a ton of CMU blocks so we got them about 16 inches off the ground uh, we want that for a couple reasons one we want to just make sure they're off the ground and two uh, it'll help keep Sherlock off of them because uh, sweet potatoes are good for dogs and Sherlock and Lady Pants love sweet potatoes to help yourself and so we had some sweet potatoes out here that were curing and he ended up grabbing probably about a third of them and was munching on them and so every time we come out here the dog would be out here eating sweet potatoes so there's worse things for him to munch on so here's the rest of them here and so now that's the next thing on the list uh, as far as the garden goes and then we got to start in on the garlic which is probably going to be uh, into next month because the garlic is uh, chilling right now in our refrigerator so anyway I just wanted to show you one of the reasons why we got these greenhouses then the other thing we're going to use the greenhouses for is that in the summertime or late spring when we actually harvest the garlic and the onions and the leeks and all that stuff we have to cure those or we don't cure leeks do we okay sorry leeks do not get cured onions and garlic get cured um, we have to have a place to store them and uh, we did a makeshift thing with our chicken tractor earlier this year and that went okay but it ended up it was getting too humid in there and it was getting um, it wasn't able to get the air out and was too bright and stuff so it ended up started rotting the onions and it started molding out the garlic but we were able to salvage them so it was okay or most of the onions were able to salvage so anyway I think I'm done rambling with this but I if we can get two years out of these greenhouses I will be happy and uh, the other thing we're going to do with the greenhouses is we need to finish sandbagging. Uh, we bought 50 sandbags initially. We have 32 down right now. But anytime we get any decent wind, 
the wind gets up underneath uh, the flaps of the greenhouse and then it uh, starts creating havoc. So we're going to put 50 sandbags on each one of these and see how it goes. Uh, now the instructions say what they want you to do is, is uh, cut a trench all the way around the greenhouse and you just bury those into the sand or into the ground. But we didn't like that idea, so that's why we're doing it this way. But we're hoping between everything, this is going to work. Obviously, we just had a decent wind gust come through earlier, and it didn't phase the greenhouses at all. So I'm hoping it's going to be a while before we end up with high wind gusts. But uh, when we do, I'll probably be out here uh, filming that because I just want to see how the greenhouses are going to do. So, anyway, I think I'm done, and now we can finally start harvesting the sweet potatoes, and we have to figure out a way to keep Sherlock out of the greenhouses.